Welcome to the Brad J Show with your host, legendary professional announcer, Brad J. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Brad J Show, effective for the 29th year of March. I think that it's a Friday. That's what's going on, right? Subscribe on YouTube to the Brad J Show and Spotify. Follow on Instagram and the thing formerly known as Twitter called X. Brad J featuring Damiana, my daughter. We are in studio and we're bringing you the second show that we've done. Ever. Yes, we are. Second show ever in the books today. So don't wait before we get started with the show. Don't you have some like social media updates like how many followers we picked up? I do have a few social media updates. Just quick. Let me update you guys. So YouTube, we got a whole seven <laughs> subscribers. You guys, wow. you guys showed up represented. We are on our ticket to fame right uh, here. <laughs> 90 views. I see on YouTube yes, on the first uh, we, the first show. We yeah. did. We got 90 views on our last uh, YouTube episode and we got some cool comments on there. Okay. Joseph Taylor said, love the father daughter duo platform. Hashtag real news. I'll knock you down five bucks for that. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> I'll send that to you. Tell me your, uh, and your then, Zell. Uh, and then Maggie Menking said, such a wonderful dynamic between you two. Love the show already. Is that her last name, Menking? It is Menking. Okay. That's well, the thank, last name. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> is that it? That's all we got? Uh, no, we have Instagram, too. You guys gave us oh, 53 shoot. followers on Instagram. 53. That's 53. That's insane. That's even better than you, too. <laughs> Staggering. Those are real followers. Okay. Who yep. is, what, what, what was this from? PJ Arneson had a little clap back for us. He said that <laughs> you can't win the World Series without an infield. We're talking about the Dodgers. I guarantee Dodgers to win the World Series. He says you can't win the World Series. PJ and I announced X Games together. I know him as Pete, but PJ is his, uh, his Instagram. All right. <laughs> thanks, Pete. Dodgers are going to win. Trust me. Let's throw some money on it, Pete. I'll bet you... I don't know. Let's go with a hundred bucks, dude. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if Pete shows up for that one. <laughs> Another and, one. Go. And then SP, the MC said yeah. the show we've all been waiting for. SPK. Good friend of mine. Uh, and also fellow announcer. Love what he does and brings to it. All right. Let's get into it. The Brad J show time for your trippy news where I kind of scan the, the dark recesses of the internet and find trippy news. And here's the, one of the trippiest things <laughs> there. I got a few of them here. A uh, rescued baby hedgehog. Turns out to be a pom pom from a beanie. Oh, I was like, "What's a pom pom at first? So okay. let me let me explain on this one. This lady finds this little ball, which was a pom pom to like a beanie. You know the little round ball that's on the top of a beanie, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You're with me on that. Okay. I got you. Okay, so she finds this and she thinks it's a hedgehog. So she takes it to the animal shelter to the hospital, and the uh, veterinarian person just said, uh, "No, that is just a pom pom from a beanie." How, how did she mistake that? How freaking that stupid do you have to be? I don't even know. That is ridiculous. Oh, no. Like, would you squeeze it a little bit? No, it doesn't move. I mean, granted, if she's like 90, I can get it. All right. Uh, dog digs up World War II bomb in backyard in Florida. Wow. That seems like in the norm. Uh, in Canada, a turkey crashed through the window of a car on the highway and was unhurt, but a very apologetic. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, I'm glad oh, he apologized. So, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, sorry about breaking your window. <laughs> you and your Canadian accent. You can have your, the <laughs> drumstick, eh? Okay. I have a lot of Canadian friends. Uh, Florida Pet becomes the first raccoon to be named the Cadbury Bunny. This is with okay. uh, Easter coming up. Cadbury, the, the candy bar, the, the chocolate, they do the Cadbury Bunny. And a raccoon has won it. So... Is it the Cadbury raccoon now? Is it not the Cadbury bunny? What's going on here? Apparently, has not been a bunny ever. Um, there's been, there was uh, Crash the Rescue Cat was in previous years. Uh, Annie Rose the Therapy Dog won it once. Betty the Frog was a big time winner, and uh, Lieutenant Dan the Teeing Walker Coon Dog uh, also had won it. So apparently, it doesn't actually go to bunnies. Okay. Why so is it not just the Cadbury animal then? That's what I would think. Maybe they all identify as bunnies. That might <laughs> be the thing. And last, finally, but not least, the Ida an Idaho man drinks a liter of lemon juice, which is like four, what was like, how many cups in that? Like four cups. Uh, does it in 13 seconds and sets a world record. David Rush. Wow. Idaho juice. man this time, not a Florida man. <laughs> he beat German serial record breaker Andre Ortloff, who did it for 16 seconds. He pounded lemon juice for okay cereal record breaker <laughs> i get it get i it? see what you did there no the dude 
that's all he does is try to break records. He probably finds right. the most obscure ones and does it that way. That right there is your trippy news for your Friday. Uh, Damiana, time with the big three. The big three, the biggest news in the sporting world. Go big or go home. And welcome back to the Brad J Show. I am Damiana, and here we're going to be talking about the big three. So our first story, we're bringing him back, MLB's sweetheart, Shohei Otani. We got an interesting for you, this one. So Shohei Otani's interpreter apparently embezzled $4.5 million to pay off his own gambling debts. What do you think about that? I don't think this is fair because I feel like this is like someone is planning this information here. <laughs> They're trying to ruin my picture as perfect year of the Dodgers winning the World Series. So Shohei, it, it's a weird story. I've followed it too. The guy had his interpreter, not just an interpreter, right? What did this guy do? He wasn't just his interpreter. He, he wasn't just his interpreter. He was his trainer, his coach, and his best friend. Now, for your not not just your interpreter, yep. again, your trainer, your coach, your best friend to steal four point five million dollars from you, and you don't know it either. That's the weirdest thing about it. Like, how would you not notice? Like, I would, I probably don't notice a hundred or two hundred missing out of an account, but I would definitely notice a thousand bucks. And I know a Shohei signed the seven hundred million dollar deal with the Dodgers, and he's the biggest name in baseball. There's just it seems like there's more to the story on this one, but I I feel like he's already spoke feel like he's right he's already said what he said and he didn't do it he didn't know anything about it but it just seems really weird that someone could drain your account of 4.5 million dollars it does and do something. it does seem a little strange yeah he said that he did not notice the money taken out of his account um he did fire his interpreter on monday so he's no longer working for him and we'll see how the story plays out for the rest of the week. Um, it might be a little interesting for him and his media conversations, but <laughs> we'll see how this goes. He can't afford the dude. I mean, he <laughs> no, had, he had $4.5 million dollar interpreter. You had to fire him. Like That's what had to happen. So it's like, yeah, you're going to have to go, man. You're costing me $4.5 million. On it. And how long has he been betting? Is this like a year? Like, is it 4.5 over five years he's betting on, on whatever he is? It's got to be a lot of gambling debts to be at $4.5 All right, it's what else you got? Crazy. All right. All right. We'll follow that story closely. <laughs> yes, we'll keep you updated on that one. Uh, we have our 18-year-old Australian snowboarder, Valentino Gasselli, is the 2024 Park and Pipe Crystal Globe World Champion. This makes this his second world champion yes, in does. Park and Pipe in a row. Uh, he won the 2023 Park and Pipe as well. Um, in 2023, he was the big air champ also. Man, just a young dude, too. All, all this at 17, 18 years old? Super young. Crazy. And, and so and you look, I got to meet him in Chicago. I was traveling to X Games, uh, what was it, a few months back, and got caught. We got stuck in Chicago for a few hours, and I just was talking to him. He is such a cool, centered, like, solid Aussie kid. I mean, 17, eight, 18 years old now. But to be that good in half pipe and to be that good in slope style and big air, it's, it's something that just it doesn't come around. Usually your specialty is one of the sports or another. But with him, in 18 years old, I feel 18. like he could go on, and we've talked about this, that he could go on to win. He could win, be the world champion in pipe, world champion in slope style, big air. I mean, the, the acclimates will go on forever for him because you look at his age. Yeah, he's actually already won a Guinness Book of World Records for the highest air in half pipe. He won that yep. this year in 2024. That was what, locks? I think he did that. Yep, in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, good stuff out of him. Nicely Making done. Moves. Really proud of that kid. Uh, our, and our third story for today is three time Olympic free ski slope style medalist Nick Gepper. He retired from slope style skiing last year and mm -hmm. he took up a new hobby half pipe skiing. <laughs> This man took up half pipe skiing and completely shocked the world. He went on to place fourth place in Copper Mountain, third place in Mammoth, fifth place in Calgary. Those were all World Cups. Yep. Uh, he went on to win fourth in half pipe skiing at X Games. And then we got a funny story. So a couple weeks ago, he was on his way to Copper Mountain for the Dew Tour, and he was not able to get through due to a major accident. Uh, they were not letting anybody through. He was worried, how am I going to get to the Dew Tour? A police officer recognized him from being an Olympic medalist, and he gave him a police escort to Copper Mountain, where he went on to win second place in half pipe. Yeah, and he banded his, he banded his vehicle, gets him with the police officer, and takes him there, and, and then he gets his best result of the year. And uh, 
know him know him quite personally i've announced with him done some tv stuff with him his his whole plan was last year to retire from slope style and be done free skiing slope style he's already got three olympic medals so nothing to prove everything to gain your rest of the career is ahead of you started announcing and i feel like he announced with me one time i was like well this sucks i need to get back into the competing <laughs> yeah he, he didn't like it <laughs> so so he goes back in to half pipe and then he just crushes it and it's funny because in copper mountain where he got fourth place x games had told him hey if you're top five you're in x games and you're competing in half pipe and then the clincher of this whole thing is he's on the u.s free ski team slope style team not on the half pipe team no. which is the strongest half pipe team in in all of the world but you just almost got to wonder at some point, does he now become on the the U.S. half pipe team if he's not going to do slope? So this story is going to just continue on and follow him on Instagram because he is a funny dude. He's man. hilarious. I was going through his Instagram posts. He's he's funny. He's yeah. got some jokes. We'll try and get him on the show. See yeah. If we can. Um, with Winter Olympics just two years away too, yep. is he going to be competing Winter Olympics doing half pipe? I'm going to be there in Italy. You can guarantee that, and I'm really hoping. And crossing the fingers that uh, he comes out and he he slays it in the next couple of years here, leading up to 22, because they'll start doing qualifying towards the end of the year next year. And maybe he makes it in there. And you know, a fourth medal, but in a different, you know, a different sport. That's, pretty darn cool. That's crazy. That's yeah. a big feat to have. So keep an eye out on Nick Gepper. He's making some big moves. And that is Tamiana's Big Three. The Brad J Show Rewind. Time to rewind the clock with this week's Brad J's Rewind. And it's time for your Brad J flashback. This one, uh, taking it back, oh man. Love this one. This one goes all the way back to probably, I would say, right around 2000, 2001. All right. The time that I was an actual Simpson character <laughs> on the all time show Simpson. And you know this. You remember this, right? I do know this. I remember it very well. All right. Let me explain how this all came about. It was the Tony Hawk Tour. So back in 2000, 2001, 2002, we traveled around to all these skateboards, skateboard parks all over the U.S., and we'd surprise people. We would show up, and we would do a full-fledged skateboard demo, and we would have you know, Tony Hawk, Bam Margera, Sean White on the BMX side. You'd have guys like Dave Mira would be out there, Kevin Robinson. You'd have Rick Dorn. All these, we had the top names were always out there showing up. And so we traveled to Denver, and Simpsons were getting ready to put Tony Hawk on a Simpsons show. And so they needed to come out and see what one of his demos was like. So we were doing a Tony Hawk tour stop in Denver at the local skate park there in downtown Denver, kind of the red clay one. And we're there, and we put it on. Well, they come out, the Simpsons productions crew come out. They see me, and they think that, oh, this is probably what every skateboard MC looks like. And so they basically took my image, copied it, and they made an announcer announcing Tony Hawk when he showed up on Simpsons. And uh, should we play it? I think we should play it. All right, let's, let's show you. Here it is. Well, if you're getting bogus returns on your investments, contact Goldman Sachs, the skewed financial planners. Huh. Next on the half pipe, boarding legend Tony Hawk. That is awesome. <laughs> and, and the funny thing about the picture, if you look at the picture and you see the tattoo, kind of the tribal tattoo. Well, I had kind of the tribal tattoo on my shoulder, too, as well. The guy's got the chain wallet. I had the chain wallet going, too. Had the goatee, the same goatee, the hair in the ponytail. The hair pulled back with the hat. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Could he have not copied me to a T? And uh, it was funny because I wasn't the first person who saw it. Someone else saw it and said, Hey, man, you need to watch The Simpson. They just uh, took your likeness. So there you go. I mean, even your voice in inflections that you use yeah. in your announcing, you know, he really, like, draws out these <laughs> words, and they did that exact same thing there. I mean, that had to 100% be completely taken off of you. No, oh, and, and I remember the demo. The demo was packed. We, we had thousands of kids there all over the place. It was absolutely off the hook, and we were announcing and introducing each of the riders as they came out there, so... He got a style from it. He did it. He became a Simpsons character. It never got paid, but that's fine because that will live on in infamy. There's your Brad J flashback for your Friday. It's the Brad J Show birthday roast with Damiana. 
Who needs marshmallows when you've got birthdays to roast? Yes, indeed, it is time once again for the birthday roast. And this one for your Friday, March 29th. Get right into the birthdays today. First of all, very good friend of our family is uh, Jason Farrow. Going to give him some props. His uh, daughter, Camilla Farrow, 14 years old. So happy birthday to Camilla. Oh, happy birthday to Camilla. I remember she was, uh, we were actually both flower girls at her parents' wedding, and she was a baby. So, so, cute. so, so cute. cute. I carried her on my little hip, and we threw the flowers. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to cry right now. Uh, if you want us to mention your birthday, we can do that. Just uh, email the Brad J Show, the Brad J Show at gmail.com, and tell us when your birthday is. We'll make sure we get it out there. Uh, Billy Carter was born on this day, 1937. You did not know who Billy Carter was. No, I didn't, and I forgot who you told me it was. Billy Carter was the president's brother, Jimmy Carter, the president of the United States back in the 70s. His brother was Billy Carter, and Billy capitalized off his brother's fame in the best way possible. What did he do? He made his own beer and called it Billy's Beer. Oh, that's perfect. That's the way to go. <laughs> he didn't live very long. His brother <laughs> did, but... Uh, but Billy Carter, 1937. Perry Farrell, born in 1959, on the state frontman, uh, Jane's Addiction, porno for Pyros. Uh, met him, interviewed him at a radio show I was doing in Santa Barbara, California. He came on the radio show, but he was late. He was an hour late to the radio show. Why? Because he went surfing at Hollister Ranch that morning and okay, the surf was good. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so a huge fan, and, and the managers and everyone at the radio station was pissed off that he was late. And I was all. He went surfing. He was surfing the ranch. And you know because you've done that before. For Christ's sake, <laughs> be stoked on the guy, man. He got some. Uh, Billy Bean was born in 1962. If you have any idea who that guy is, I'm a baseball guy, so Billy Bean. Uh, he is uh, basically the story about Moneyball. It's on Netflix. Brad Pitt plays him in movies It's about how they made money or how they put a team together. Uh, very cheaply, but still made a competitive team. So Moneyball on Netflix. Check it out. Brad Pitt plays Billy Bean. So how cool is that? Oh, That's who's pretty gonna, cool. Huh? Who's going to play you in your story? Oh, just Brad Pitt. You know, nothing crazy. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Capriati, the Cheech Marin of tennis. She was born in 1976. I have a joke with that. The reason I call her that. At the height of her game when she was uh, competing in professional tennis, I guess she got busted for some pot. And so we were doing a story on her, and we called her the Cheech Marin of, of tennis, which I That's thought is great. funny. And Cheech is a good guy, too. Uh, Cy Young. Uh, the Cy Young Award is a baseball award that's given out uh, for pitchers. And he was born on this day way back when, 1867. Final birthday that I have, Sam Walton, 1918. <clears throat> Who is Sam Walton? He is the creator of Walmart and also Sam's Club. And if you go to Bentonville, Arkansas, you can go and see his office the way it was when he passed away. It's all plexiglassed off, and you can see. You and Mom did that, didn't you? I did that with your mother. We went there and, and hung out and did it. And so I recommend. That's awesome. I'm not the hugest fan of Walmart, but I like the story of Sam Walton. There it is. That is your birthday, Rose. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. What? I got know? two birthdays, too. Give me. Okay, what do you got? All right. Because uh, she this. doesn't know the ones I have, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I don't know any of those people. All right, what do you got? Um, so on Wednesday, we had Mariah Carey had a birthday. Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey and Fergie as well. No. Fergie's birthday. Right. And Fergie, she was actually kind of a second English teacher to me because how she so? she taught me how to spell glamorous. How did you? Oh, but the song. Okay, let me hear it. <laughs> let me hear it go. Okay, anyone? That, so there, there's her. See, when you're homeschooled, that's your English teacher is Fergie. Fergie. Okay. Also, Gwen Stefani. Oh, Gwen Stefani was your English teacher. She taught me how to spell bananas. Yeah. Uh, how's that? B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> that's your birthday roast for your Friday. The Brad J Show time for This Day in History. All right, This Day in History. Not a lot. Not a lot of stuff going on, but uh, on this day in 1638, 1638. Wow. All right. The first permanent white folk settled in Delaware. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were Swedes. They're from Sweden. Ah, okay. Little so, I mean, to me, there. that's earlier than I thought. I thought the white folk didn't come in there until after that. But there you go, 1638. 
1806, construction is authorized for the first U.S. federal highway called the Cumberland Road. And they still haven't started construction on it yet. <laughs> no, that's actually, that's the first one. So that's the first U.S. federal highway was approved to get done in 1806. Okay, that's awesome. Does that highway still exist today? Uh, Cumberland Road, give me, look it up. Why don't All you right. check it out? Let's see. Cumberland Road. Why she's doing that? Beethoven was buried on this date, 1827. 20,000 people were at the dude's funeral. Beethoven buried on this date. Okay. Cumberland, what does it say? Read it to me. Go. The National Road was the first highway built entirely with federal funds. This road was authorized by Congress in 1806 during the Jefferson administration. Construction began in Cumberland, Maryland in 1811. But now I'm not seeing whether it's still around. Well, no. I mean, it's not going to be the same road. I mean, it's going to go on. I mean, what is the road now? What it's is probably, it now? It's probably the 40. It's probably a little bit of the 80. It's probably, you never, I mean, how is that working out? Yeah, that's how it works. Oh, Interstate 40. It is the 40, which we live right on the 40. Right so on the 40. So there you go. There we go. The Cumberland Road was basically the origin of the 40. Uh, I did say Beethoven buried on the state. 20,000 people attended his funeral. Wow, that's a lot. 20,000. Uh, Ohio makes it illegal on the state in 1852 for kids under the age of 18 and women to work more than 10 hours a day. Ooh, I like that one. Man, you guys had it <laughs> so much better when you were that age, right? Oh, yeah. Ten hours a day. Like, you can work nine, but we're not letting but you, you do push, ten. Yeah, you push ten, you're pushing it there. That's for the men. In 1986. Okay. Now, remember the Beatles came out basically 63, 64, mm -hmm. right? But in 1986, did you know the Beatles records went on sale for the first time in Russia? I did not know that. Uh-huh. In the USSR? Think about that. 1986. So it took them a bunch of years, 20 some odd years for them, for Russia to say, all oh, right, I guess the Beatles are not going away soon. We must sell the records. I mean, they only made a whole song about the USSR. That's probably they <laughs> why they didn't let them sell them. There, so. said, no. uh, 1995, Howard Stern uh, hits the airways for the first time. 95. That's when he was actually really good. Uh, to 2017, last one, man's body found in a seven-meter-long python in Indonesia in 2017. Oh, oh, gosh, I was not expecting you to go to a snake there. <laughs> a man's body found inside a seven-meter-long python. I honestly don't even know what to say right now. That's just, um, it's a little gruesome. <laughs> Got to think he was a small dude because I just don't think like a full grown yeah. man is going to fit into even a seven meter python. That's a big python. That's, that's a gonna, pretty big python. It's going to give you some problems there. Yeah. Well, that is going to wrap things up for the Brad J show. Thanks for uh, being part of it. Our second ever Brad J show. How'd you feel about it? I thought it was great. I think that. I think you're way more funnier this show. You think I was funnier? Yeah. I okay, really do. good. I'll, I'll try a little harder. Okay, we're working on that. <laughs> uh, you can subscribe on YouTube and Spotify to The Brad J Show. Follow on Instagram, Twitter. Well, it was known as Twitter. It's now X. And on Facebook, too, as well. Before we go, we're going to leave you with a little something special. It's called The Moment of Zen with Zen J. Take a look at this. Brad J, Damiana signing off. See ya. Welcome to the 2021 version of Zen J. Now with what's all going on in the world today, we all need some more Zen. And so today I thought, what a better time than ever to share my Zen with you. Let's talk about things that are Zen. Are squirrels Zen? <laughs> no, squirrels are not Zen. They're too wiry, they're just too <laughs> So they're not zen. What is zen? A sleeping elephant is very zen. Think about a sleeping elephant. Not a mad elephant, definitely not zen, but a sleeping elephant is very zen. Okay, that's the difference between non-zen with a squirrel and zen with a sleeping elephant. I'm Brad J. thanks for being zen. Goodbye.